Hello everybody, in this video we're going to talk about the support role in the game predecessor. How we can make the best out of it. We're also going to talk about strategies, tips and tricks and hey, well, how we can actually win games by doing your job well by supporting your teammates. Of course, it's important to keep in mind that uh, there are different heroes, each one with their own abilities. So some of the, of course, strategies might uh, be a little bit different, depends on the abilities of each hero. Now, generally speaking, and we're going to look at it in a moment, support heroes have different utility that allows them to buff and also debuff uh, uh, opponents to help support the team, uh, both uh, during the lane phase and during team fights. And you also need to help maximize the effectiveness of other heroes by letting them do your thing, giving more time, uh, without having the pressure of another opponent on their tails. Although support heroes won't be probably the ones that will lead to kind of a game-winning situations, there are of course situations where if you initiate, for example, you can lead to a very important win. But generally speaking, you should focus on supporting your teammates, those who actually deal high damage, like the EDC, for example, and the jungle, and let them do their job effectively. Now keep in mind that different heroes, some of them uh, are focused, on, for example, on shielding on healing, for example, Nurbash uh, can heal. Uh, Muriel uh, can shield. Of course, with combination of different items, you can do both. Again, depends on the build, but I won't get into it right now. Uh, others are better, for example, in poking. For example, Muriel can poke uh, with Alacri Al Alacrity uh, ability. Nurbash, for example, can throw his uh, drumstick that deals magical damage and stun enemies. Uh, basically, you can also uh, stop enemies from actually uh, activating the ult or just cancel their ult altogether while it's actually channeled. Some others would be better in catching enemies. Uh, for example, if you look at Richter, uh, one of his abilities uh, is Rip Slash, uh, land chain forward, attaching to the first enemy hit, uh, magical damage, and pulling them towards him. Great as initiating, especially against a single target. All right. Uh, there's also one who are better in catching enemies, catchers, who can uh, move faster. Uh, others can be more tanky, for example, uh, Richter can be very tanky. Now, as of time making this video and more support heroes will be introduced later on, uh, right now the recommended one are Lutin Balika, Muriel, Nurbash, Richter and Decker. Keep in mind that you are not restricted to only those heroes, you can choose any hero, but those are recommended ones. Of course, you might change things, depends on your team composition, the enemy team composition as well, but these are the ones if you're especially starting uh, uh, right now, you want to go with those safe selected of characters. And again, the simple reason for choosing a character that is more dedicated to a support role is because they have unique ability that allows you to support the other roles to for them to actually be very effective. Uh, otherwise, their effectiveness will drop and you need to, well, kind of be in place. For example, if you focus something on damage uh, and not actually supporting your teammates with healing and shields, uh, your other teammates can be in a situation where they can be really effective, they will probably spend more time trying to reposition or maybe even retreat rather than be active and deal damage uh, instead. But keep in mind as you play, you might find other players, you know, trying to find some really unique and strong composition that can uh, outperform other team compositions. Now, as a support character, you'll support your entire team when possible, but at the beginning of the game especially, you're going to start out at the dual lane. So dual lane, you can see when you see the gold buff, the yellow circle, this is where you should go. And you're going to be the ADC there, which should be the one who actually carry uh, the team by dealing lots of damage, especially closer to mid game until end game, you should support them because they are squishy characters, uh, but they deal lots of damage. So you should support the ADC as much as possible, uh, especially during early game. Now, Generally speaking, again, it, your job will be a bit different, depends of, of you know where we are in the game. For example, in early game, uh, you're going to be very close to the ADC, uh, making the ADC, you know, make it safer for the ADC to farm for gold, to level up faster, to be able to, to buy items and get advantage. Uh, whatever you do, don't get the last hit on minions because this gives gold and you want the ADC to get, again, to be better compared to your opponent as early as possible. Again, at this stage, generally speaking, try to poke your uh, uh, enemies and also try to uh, make them spend their mana. So again, enemies without mana are kind of useless, uh, generally speaking. 
Try to make sure that, again, your uh, duo won't actually get hit a lot. Try to create opportunities, maybe in some points initiating. For example, if you play Drictor, you can actually grab enemies and even get early kills. But keep in mind that poking opportunities can be very important because, again, keep in mind the jungle will search for low HP enemies. The jungle probably won't leave until he, uh, he sees that maybe one of the uh heroes in the dual lane is low then he's going to rotate towards the dual lane and try to get a fast kill uh, keep in mind uh, all heroes in the game have the ability to teleport basically this is the dash option if you can exhaust the dash uh, the dash option it will make it easier for the jungle and also for yourself and the adc to get an early kill now during mid game uh you should look for opportunities to also support uh, other lanes uh for example the closest lane uh is the mid lane right and in some certain situation you can see maybe the mid lane uh, needs support and you can go and rotate and in also in other situation you will have op option to actually support and help your team uh secure the fang tooth objective as you can see on the map is very close to the dual lane and here you can see us actually pushing well the dual lanes. We have time, so we move to the solo lane on the other side to surprise Grax and get a kill. This is why it's important to push lanes and also, again, uh, put wards. So if Grax put a ward there, he was able to see us coming. But again, he didn't, and we got an easy kill. Now I'm gonna repeat it again. It doesn't matter which stage you are during the duration of the match, make sure to ward the jungle and other important key areas like Fangtooth and O Prime. Uh, the reason for that, again, information is everything. You always want to know where your enemies are located and what the strategies are. Keep in mind, even without wars, uh, enemies can be detected by a friendly tower, uh, minions, and allies if they are in range. Keep in mind, if you're already warding, try to ward uh, deeper uh, in key areas rather than, you know, just close to the gates uh, because this gives you more time to prepare rather than, again, get alerted and somebody attacks you straight away. Alright, so a few uh, recommendations. First of all, uh, you can see the main objective here, Fangtooth. Uh, you have uh, Prime, Mini Prime in the beginning, two minutes after, 20 minutes after all Prime. Uh, objective that you want to make sure they're awarded. Uh, because again, this is an uh, objective that you want to take. You can actually surprise your, uh, the opponents if you already know they are there. Um, you also have advantage because if they fight, for example, all Prime, they might be low already. Same go to Fangtooth, they're kind of caged, you can kind of channel your ult properly and cage them and deal lots of damage and eliminate them and actually even also secure the objective as well at the same time. Keep in mind regarding the jungle, uh, the jungle, uh, the problem again is that I see many players just warding at the entrance. For example, you can see the dual lane, if you ward here, even if you get alerted and your, D your ADC and you are here, you get surprised and you don't have time to actually retreat or you know react in, in the right time uh, this is very important to make sure that if you're already putting a wall try to put it deeper or even better at intersections where if for example the jungle comes from here you can catch the jungle getting out usually again they farm the jungle and try to find ways that are not seen and they can actually surprise you uh, so the experienced players know that many players actually ward this entrance and they try to surprise you from behind it happens a lot as you probably know so, for example, if the jungle comes here, uh, you can put uh, a ward here and the jungle maybe will try to go and get close to, for example, Fangtooth and surprise it from here, from the back. So this ward won't actually help you. So again, it's better to catch uh, the jungle in a situation where they, well, probably, most probably will pass through. Uh, because again, if they're going from the jungle out, they pass through this area. They can also come, by the way, from mid, all right? So if you put it here, in this intersection, you can catch them coming from mid and also coming from this part of the jungle. Of course, same goes to the other side. Uh, keep in mind that information is uh, important for the entire team and also, again, for the jungle. Uh, the jungle wants to know where the other jungle is located uh, because it can also support you if you, they see that the jungle moves towards you to the dual lane. And also, again, if they see that the jungle is on the other side and uh, the other ju your jungle actually go there and exhaust their resources from their camps. And of course, a late game. Late game is where there are lots of team fights, and you're gonna find out that it's very important to stick with your teammates uh, because, again, if not, uh, enemies are very strong at this point. And same goes, by the way, to other teammates that are isolated. So you want to make sure they stay very close to your teammates and support them. Now, your position depends, of course, on your hero. For example, in Victor, depends also on the build. I can be more on the fault line. The other heroes, I might stay a bit back. And I want to make sure that nobody's surprising for the back. So, positioning is very important. Depends on the hero you play. 
Now here, every mistake can be very crucial. If you miss, for example, your hook or uh, you're just pushing too much, uh, this can be very uh, devastating for your team. And as you know, if things kind of uh, going bad, it's a snowball and you can find out that your entire team can be wiped very fast. So this is a crucial time to again uh, get information, put words, know where the enemies are located and also where your teammates are located. Also again, try to maximize the potential of your abilities in your ultimate ability to get as much as possible benefits from both you and your team. And keep in mind, again, this is true to every hero in late game. If you're making a mistake and don't use your ability at the right time or using your ult or miss your ult, this all can lead to snowball to a very devastating loss, uh, even losing the game entirely. Also note, there are different builds and different heroes with unique abilities. This means that some of them will have uh, abilities that will kind of change a bit things. For example, Muriel can teleport to another hero on another lane very, very quickly. Uh, so again, you don't need even to spend a lot of time just to switch to a lane and help support your teammates. All of this again will be more specific uh, to hero and of course I will publish uh, videos regarding each hero and some of them are already available on my channel so you can check them out. Now, if you want to know my favorite one, doesn't mean, again, I'm not talking about the better one, meta stuff, just the one that I enjoy playing the most, are Richter first, Muriel second, and Deku third. And that's about it. I hope you find this uh, guide useful. Uh, if you have any other tips and tricks that you want to add, add them to the comment section below. Thanks for watching, everybody. Consider maybe subscribing, leave some elite a like, and I'll see you very soon on the next one. Thanks for watching. Cheers. And we all got dreams. We all want things. But what you gonna do for it? How you gonna move for it? What you gonna be? And do you believe?